Welcome back to our coverage of the Miami Book Fair. For Book View Now, I'm Jeffrey Brown, and we have a, we've had a wonderful day here of authors and uh, beautiful weather, and we have a really special session now. I'm joined by my co-host, Rich Foley, and we are joined by the two leading lights of the Miami Book Fair. Dr. Eduardo Padron is the president of Miami-Dade College, Mitchell Kaplan, founder, head of Books and Books. Um, before we start, I have to say congratulations to you. A very special congratulations. The winner of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Thank you very much. I feel uh, very honored, to say the least. And still, I'm not sure I can believe it until it happens. <laughs> <laughs> you can't believe it. It's, uh, it's very humbling. Did very they, humbling. Did, what, how did it work? Did they, someone call you and... Uh... I had a message that... Uh, to expect a call from the White House at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, yeah. about three weeks ago. And I said, okay. So I get this message, and uh, when they started talking, I thought it was a joke. And um, then I realized it was for real. I just didn't know how to respond. Uh, but then it sinked in. And uh, they told me not to say anything until they announced it. That was the most difficult part because I committed not to do that, so I didn't even tell my family uh, until about a couple of days ago when they made it official, and here we are. You know, I know from meeting you several years ago about your story, but I want you to, I mean, think about where you came from to all that you've accomplished here and the, the name you've made for, for the uh, affordable quality higher education to a Presidential Medal of Freedom. It must mean a lot personally. It means a lot because uh, when you think where I came from and how I came into this country as an immigrant, actually as a refugee, as a young uh, adolescent uh, with no money, no English, no understanding of the culture, along with a younger brother. Um, and uh, today at this point in, in my life to be uh, singled out by the President of the United States for this incredible honor when I study who got this before and who are the people that are getting this with me, um, I just, it's just beyond belief. Uh, it's, uh, it is a, a journey that has been incredible for me. Uh, I think that it's a tribute to education and the opportunities that you get in this country. This couldn't, play, this couldn't happen in any other place but America. And I think uh, it is something that uh, I try to every day pay back by helping others and opening the door of opportunity for thousands and thousands of people who are equally deserving of that opportunity, who are talented but do not necessarily have the opportunity to attend college. And as you know, college today is no longer uh, a privilege. Right. It is uh, an imperative for anyone who wanted to join the American dream and join the middle class. So I feel blessed uh, to have the opportunity to do that every day of my life and uh, very grateful uh, to be able to do it. Well, it's wonderful recognition. Congratulations. Thank you. So, so thinking about the two of you, about where we are now, Mitch, take us back to the, the beginnings of this. I mean, well, thinking again about it, can you imagine here from then, right? <laughs> no. I, I, I also have to say that for those of us who have, um, have, have, have sort of glowed in the, um, or bathed in the glow of Eduardo and all that Eduardo has done. All of us who know him and who know what this college has meant. I grew up in Miami, who know what this college has meant to, to the city and to the county and to education in general. Uh, just couldn't be more proud of what Eduardo is doing. I got news of it by, by seeing something online and I just floated up and hit the <laughs> ceiling when I saw it, it was just, a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it really, it, it tells, what Eduardo just said is really telling the story of what the book fair was. Eduardo called a bunch of us together, I was a young bookseller. Uh, Eduardo, and he can speak to this, was the president still of this. a young bookseller, he, he, right? <laughs> not as young, <laughs> but Eduardo was the president of this campus. Yeah. And he called a bunch of us booksellers together. I think you had just come from Barcelona, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, well, I had been to uh, both uh, Barcelona and Buenos Aires, and I saw a great tradition. I saw bookstores and lines of people trying to get in, and yeah. it was just to see books. I didn't really have the authors. 
And I said, why can't we do this in Miami? So I came back, and I called Mitch and a few others, and we got together, and I said, if you help me organize this, I'll find the money to get it done. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it took a lot of courage. It took a lot of, uh, you know, believing, because uh, downtown Miami, uh, in 19, right. uh, when we started this, <laughs> Very rough was place. not a place to be. It was a scary place, like most major American urban areas. Uh, every business, everybody had gone the other way. Downtown was desolated, but we started a campus to help revitalize downtown. And to be honest with you, I didn't do this because of the love of literature. I did it in a very selfish way to try to bring people downtown. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the first year we were shocked to get 25,000 people come in, and the rest is history. This has grown to be not only the largest, but I would venture to say uh, the finest uh, literary yeah. gathering in the whole nation. We used to, it was a little like the old Mickey Rooney thing, you know, let's put on a book fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was a more sophisticated than that, but we were, we, you know, I was in a more a, a fortunate position that I owned a bookstore at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was very confident that people would come out because I knew that people were reading here in Miami. Mm -hmm. If you know, ba back in the early 80s, th there was the meme that nothing really serious happened right. here. Right. That if anyone read, I re the story I tell is that when I first approached publishers about sending authors here, all they wanted to do was send non-prescription drug book authors <laughs> here because you know, there was this idea that it was only old people right. and it was only people wanting to read beach reads and all of that. And we had a very, our very first book fair, we had James Baldwin here yeah. and we had a full house for him. Amazing. You know, it, ha it has really taken an incredible degree of dedication of Mitch and, and other people uh, who, who really um, not only believe that this could happen, but this is a year-round preparation for today, yeah. I mean, for this week. Yeah. And uh, it, it has taken the love and real commitment uh, to make this happen. The leadership that, that uh, Mitch has provided, we couldn't have done it. It has been an incredible partnership of the community and the college, and uh, it's, it's just something that we take a great deal of pride mm. in, in doing every year. And, and the beauty of it is to have seen the city grow yeah. as we do. Eduardo and I have always talked about that you know, Miami is such a diverse city, and at the time that we started it, it was, there was a lot of strife. There were riots, there were, Marielle had just happened not too long before, and there was a lot of tension in the city. And we wanted to create something under which there would be a gigantic tent that everybody could feel safe under yeah, this tent. Yeah. And Rich, from, I mean, from our perspective, this was the place you really had to be, right? right. You this, is be. The first, this is the first book fair that we we wanted to cover, and it's for a lot of the reasons you all talk about. One of the things that was obviously evident about the Miami Book Fair was the energy that it brings to the downtown area, the energy that it brings to the city of Miami, the transformative nature of books in terms of the perception of Miami, I thought was really powerful, and I thought spoke to a lot of what we love about books at PBS and at Bookview Now, the idea that books actually not only can change lives, but can change the way you think about a city and the way the people who live there. And to us, that was always one of the big energy drivers. You know what the book fair has done also, which to me is very important, it has brought the whole community together. Mm -hmm. You know, there are presentations here in different languages, authors from all over. Uh, so people, regardless of where you come from, your race, your ethnicity, your economic level, whatever, people see themselves represented in the authors that come to the mm -hmm. fair. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it's a family affair, like, you know, people bring their children, yeah. uh, their, you know, cook uh, authors, and, you know, all kind of uh, activities that people enjoy uh, as a family. There's also people coming from outside of Miami now. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of remarkable. To so someone came up to me the other day and said, you know, I'm from Nebraska and I come every single year. Mm -hmm you know, for the last five years to mm -hmm. the book fair. Mm -hmm. I guess they want to get out of the cold of Nebraska, <laughs> too. <laughs> it's that. not such a bad thing. <laughs> but they just, you know, it's a very, you know, in this high-tech world that we live in, yeah. this is a very analog kind of experience. Well, I mean, this is your business year-round, yeah, right? So it is. Somehow, so somehow, it, even after we talked about the end of bookstores and the end right. of books... That's not happening. But it's not happening. Books are surviving. You, yeah. The excitement that we had on Thursday, there were 9,000 school kids <clears> here, and each one of those, because of the offices of the book fair, were able to get a free book. And mm -hmm. each kid went mm -hmm. home with a book I after know. hearing an author speak. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I spoke to some of these authors, and they were just, 
you know, and I, the comment that I usually get is, God, in Miami? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And I think we've really been able to make that change of sensibility as well. Mm-hmm. Well, we set our clocks by the Miami Book Fair, uh, what we do. I mean, the end of the year, your book fair comes at the end of the year, it's 2016, but for us it's the beginning of the year. This is where we amp up our coverage, where we add more elements. We are, we're here for three days, which is more than we're at anywhere else. And the level of authors that you bring in, the quality of writers, and the passion they have for this event, they've been coming for years, right. is so evident. You're doing something not only right for all the readers, uh, but for the authors who want to be a part of it every year. You know, we have over a thousand volunteers. Yeah. Right. Uh, volunteers, they don't get paid, otherwise we wouldn't no, do this. You know what, I just was driven over from, you know, I'm at the hotel where you put a lot of the authors and you get driven over and by a volunteer. We, right. Everybody starts talking, everybody's so into it. Right. Yeah. And, and they make the authors feel at home and right. they really go the extra mile well, to really and, be. And I have to say, I mean, these volunteers are deans at the college. They are yeah. professors. <laughs> they are students the, of the Honors College. And then we have an incredibly dedicated staff that I know you guys have worked with. It's a small staff, but it's, they work 24-7 yeah. to make this so, happen. So just uh, 30 seconds here or so, but what's the future? I mean, can you get any, can you get bigger at this point? Or what, or, I don't know about uh, bigger, but I'm sure we can get better. Yeah. <laughs> there are always areas in which we can improve. We keep adding different elements to the fair. People give us a lot of suggestions as to things that they would like to see. And uh, it's just something that, that we have fun doing it year-round. No, and the Miami Book Fair does do programming year-round yeah, yeah. that we call Miami Book Fair programming. And I also have to say, just personally, uh, on air, since this is we're closing this book fair, that uh, my message to the entire community, um, even though I feel sort of like an honorary member of this college, but you are this college. I, I have to say that to me, this is the greatest gift that uh, Miami Dade College gives, one of the greatest gifts that it gives to the community. And it really is because of this gentleman over mm-hmm. here. And, and, and I'm not just saying that because he's sitting right here, but I say that to anyone who will listen. That without the stability, without the commitment, you know, this is a this is this takes a commitment to put this mm-hmm. on, and there are very few universities in the country that would understand the importance of it. So. All right, Mitchell Kaplan and Dr. Eduardo Padron, thank you, and again, congratulations thank to you. you. Thanks thank for you very having much. us back here. Thanks. And this concludes the wonderful days here that we've had in Miami at the Miami Book Fair. Three days of coverage where we've talked to many, many wonderful authors. And I want everyone watching to know that you can see all of these interviews and a whole lot more by going to bookviewnow.org. I personally want to thank all of my colleagues who I've been working with here from Detroit Public Television, especially my colleague and co-host Rich Foley, who puts all this together. And um, it's just been great. It's just been great once again. And even the weather was actually better, right, than we've, than we've ever had here. So maybe we'll be outdoors next year. We'll see. Although then it'll storm. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you for being here as well. It's so our pleasure.